Hey everybody, so this is your weekly update for Gen Chem 1. Today is an important, or this week rather, not just today, but uh, this week is an important week for you because you have your first lab report due um, and you also have your, your first exam in Gen Chem 1. So I'm hoping that you're reviewing and working on things. I'm really hoping you take advantage of office hours and tutoring time to catch up or practice or clarify any questions you have um, before Thursday, because Thursday, um, and by the way, I'm coming, I'm recording this right now at uh, about noon on Monday, the 22nd. So when I say Thursday, I'm talking about the 25th. Thursday afternoon, 3 p.m. or so, or so maybe it's 315 your first exam opens up. It is a timed exam, so it's important that you plan for about an hour and a half um, to get through the test. You can't leave it and come back. You wanna finish it all at once. Um, you have from Thursday around 3 p.m. until Monday around 3 p.m. to finish this test. Uh, Late work's not really accepted on this one unless you have uh, a medical reason for missing or uh, a family crisis or something important, okay? Simply like not budgeting your time is not a real good reason to miss your first test, okay? So make sure you're using a planner. You're going and planning out your study time and you're planning out which times you're gonna come to office hours or tutoring. And it would be so great uh, to plan out when you're going to take your test, okay? Uh, to whatever degree you can control it, try to have a quiet environment. Make sure you've got some paper nearby, that kind of thing. You are going to be submitting your work on paper to me as well um, because there are cases where people are doing the work correctly and they may just put it into the computer incorrectly. So I'm going to collect that. It's going to be worth 10 points just to submit your handwritten work. And then it may also boost up your points on your actual exam. OK, so if you don't know how to scan and submit things, I have a tech tip for you. It's tech tip number three. It's a video that walks you through how to do it, showing you everything on a phone. Um, so yeah, you should be ready to do that. Um, between Thursday and Monday. And then we're gonna jump into our new material right after you're finished with your test, okay? So it's gonna be available from Friday onward. You can start objective three. That'll be the new material. I really suggest taking the test first, get that out of the way, and then jump into the new stuff, okay? Besides that, we also have reports due this week. So regardless which group you're in, A or B, you have something due. And so I'm gonna, Oh, before I move on, really, really quick, I wanna tell you something about the test and I'm going to make another video about test taking that is separate from this, but um, it'll be attached to Blackboard on Thursday morning. So I know you have it. But the other thing I wanna warn you about now is that if you click on the explanation button, the one that looks like glasses, we use this a lot you know, in normal learning mode. This is a test though this week on Thursday. If you click on the explanation, a window pops up that says you will lose your current question attempt. I wanna tell you what this means. It means you, you get that question wrong, okay? It means no points. It means you can't even enter an answer, okay? So don't use the explanation button during the exam. It's not really meant for that, okay? It's better to try the problem, do the best work you can, write down your work so that maybe I can try to follow along and at least give you some points, even if you don't get the complete answer. All right, but I would not click on the explanation button <laughs> during the test because then you can't even answer an answer. If you do click on the explanation button and you do end up writing stuff down, I am much less likely to give you the credit for it because it's an advantage that other students aren't going to use, all right? The other thing I'm going to warn you about is a lot of these questions on Alex are wrong when you Google them. All right. And so I would caution you, you have a limited amount of time to take the test. And so Googling is going to take a long time. So instead, I highly recommend that you take the week to review. That's why I gave you an open review period. And you really get this stuff knocked out um, before you come in to take your test. Okay. 
Okay, then so about lab reports. Um, so depending which group you're in, A or B, and which lab you're in each day of the week, uh, will determine your exact due date. You should go look for this lab schedule on your lab Blackboard site. It will have the specifics there. But you can see if you're in my Wednesday class, my Wednesday lab, in group A, group A is the first page, then you have a trace contamination experiment right up that's due. And I wanted to just clarify something. We took out the peer review and I just got told today in office hours that it was still in the procedure. So I crossed that off. You still need to write an introduction as part of your submission, okay? Um, but I was gonna finish typing this. If you do want feedback on your stuff, remember that most instructors will give you feedback during office hours. So take advantage of that. Um, but there is not a separate peer review this semester. Instead, just write your introduction. If you forget what should go in an introduction, then go ahead and look at the second, starting on the second page, we have information about what goes in a lab report here. Okay, but the each of these bold sections needs to be one of the sections in your report. It's a good idea to use bolding or headings or whatever formatting you want to clearly label each section and you want to make sure to put the correct information into each each section. You'll notice for the trace report, we have an intro, data, calculations. These are the only thing that might be done by hand. Everything else in this report should be typed. Um, results, which again, should be typed. There is not a separate discussion or conclusion in this one. We want you to focus on learning to write an introduction first. We uh, do have some questions that you need to ask, answer right here. These will just be typed up don't worry about writing it like a conclusion. Just type your answers to these. So that's group A. Group B, you have um, the Excel report to turn in. Okay, so you should have already had your Excel file finished, but if it's not, you definitely need to do that. Um, it's going to have the data section, which you can mostly copy and paste out of Excel. It's going to have the graphs from Excel. It's gonna have your calculations. Some of them will be done by hand. Some of them are included in your Excel file. Uh, it's gonna have the copy and pasted results from your Excel file. And then again, answers to questions, not a separate conclusion. So this one does not have an introduction. It does have uh, questions you need to answer at the end. This should all be put into a Word or Google document and you should upload it as a PDF or a Word file to Blackboard to turn it in. Um, most, most of the labs are set up the same way as mine, uh, where you go to course materials to submit your reports and you can, at least in my class and if any, if the instructor copied my course, you can submit as many times as you want to into these files. So that's handy if you want feedback, uh, ahead of time, might be a little late for this week, but for your future reports, you can submit things and shoot me an email, um, or come to office hours and ask for some input. Um, so those two reports are going to be due this week. Uh, I would suggest, by the way, just printing out these schedules and using them like a checklist, okay? If you are in group A, you are, um, you're going to be in person this week. And by the way, some professors are collecting reports in person as well as online, so be sure to pay attention to how they want you to turn it in. Okay, if you need to turn it in in person, you have to print it before you come to lab. We don't have enough printer ink right now for people to be printing it in the lab. So make sure you come prepared um, with that ready to go. Okay, so anyway, if you're in group A, you are going to be in person this week. You are going to be performing our significant figures measurement lab. Okay, if you're in group B, Make sure you print that and do the pre-lab, by the way. There are videos, a lot of videos actually, quite a few videos about the techniques you're gonna learn. Um, make sure you take the time to print the procedure, watch the videos that are at the end of the procedure and take notes as you go so that when you go to lab, you know exactly what you're doing. Um, group A, you will not be doing the melting point this week. You're going to keep these instructions and do the melting point when you come back in two weeks, okay? So don't worry about that part of the procedure for now. 
Group B, you are at home this week. You're working on separation of a mixture. This is a self-paced experiment, but you need to do it this week because you are turning in your kit next week. You also need to come to lab next week when you do um, the significant figures measurement. You are gonna take your melting point of the material you isolate in the separation of a mixture experiment when you come next week. So it's really important to get that done. Um, don't forget about office hours. There's gonna be questions. You're gonna go through a lot of trial and error because that's what science is really like. Um, but if you get stuck or you have questions, come meet with somebody, come ask them, okay? There's tutors, there's me, there's your lab instructors. Uh, we're all here to help you out. So don't wait until like Saturday to do this because we are like very much less available on the weekend. So get it done during your normally scheduled lab period or you know, as soon as you can after that, okay? Um, the other question I've been getting is, is how do you find the physical data um, the MSDS sheets, the safety data sheets that are included in your lab kit have some of it, but it's not going to give you all of the details that you need. So you need to go find some resources online and make sure you cite your sources. Use either MLA or APA format um, to do that, but make sure you keep track of your sources so that if something goes wrong later, you can point at it and say, but I thought this source said blah, 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 and then we can work it out. Okay. Um, but once you have your physical characteristic information, you need to come up with a plan. And it's never a bad idea to go bounce that off someone else in our Discord channel or ask me or the tutors for advice. Um, it's always fine to do that. Okay. So again, take care, take advantage of office hours, plan for your exam this week. I wouldn't wait until late in the week to do my experiment because then you're trying to do the exam and the experiment at the same time. So that can be stressful. Spread out your efforts this week. Um, the other thing I wanna tell you is I'm changing my office hours. I'm gonna put this out on, um, in this announcement, I'll put a little chart with the new office hours in it and it will also be updated in all of your syllabus information. I'm doing that because I'm finding that there are times when people just aren't coming and um, other times when people would like to be able to meet. So I'm trying to adjust it to fit as many people into office hours as we can. If these changes don't work for you and you still want to meet, that's fine. Send me an individual email and we will have an appointment. Um, okay. Keep up the good work, guys. Um, I really am excited to see how well you do on the test this week. And as always, I'm here for you if you have questions.